Hello and welcome to the Grapeseed Official Podcast. On this episode of the Deep Dive series, we will talk about transitions. In Grapeseed, we use the word transitions to talk about moving our students from one learning area of the classroom to another. This is usually moving students to and from chairs in front of a whiteboard to a seated carpet area in the corner of the classroom, although your specific classroom might be different. I have seen classrooms big enough to support three or even four learning areas in the classroom. More isn't always better, but having at least two is very helpful for student learning. Why is this? It is important to remember the age of our students. We aren't teaching high school or college students. Our kids won't sit perfectly still and remain focused for a full 40-minute lesson. They need to move, and it's easy to see when they do. They'll start shifting around in their chairs or turn to their friends and start playing instead of looking at the teacher or the materials. The short attention span and the need for movement can be a struggle for teachers if they are always reacting to student lack of focus. If you're transitioning after you notice student attention slipping, you're typically already too late. Students have lost focus and now you're struggling to regain it. The better approach is to know that your students need to move and give them those chances to do so before they begin to lose focus. Your class can then continue smoothly without the bump on the road of you having to try to regain focus after it has been lost. Ideally, you would incorporate movement into your lessons just before each time your students lost focus. In practice, though, this can be tricky. Student focus isn't an hourglass where you can watch the grains of sand fall and know exactly when time is up. Another point to consider here is the quality of the movement you incorporate into your lessons. For example, every five minutes you could allow your students to run around the classroom for 30 seconds. Sure, they get some movement in, but that random form of movement has such wasted potential. What if, instead of letting your students run around like crazy, you use that movement in your lessons to target specific learning objectives, especially things where using movement is ideal? Going back to our previous example, if you let students randomly run around for 30 seconds every 5 minutes, that's over three minutes of time in a 40-minute lesson you lose on teaching uptime. As always, Grapeseed Design has you covered, primarily on two fronts here. We have action activities that target specific learning objectives that incorporate a lot of movement. So, instead of the random running around, you are still providing movement to help refocus your students while also keeping that teaching uptime going. Students are learning while doing action activities, as opposed to taking a break from learning by running around. The other way Grapeseed has you covered is that the lesson plans themselves not only guide you with what to teach and how to teach it, it also has scheduled transitions built in to help guide you on the proper timing to use them before students begin to lose focus. This, combined with the planned variety of components also incorporated into the lesson plans, is a very underrated feature of Grapeseed design. You will often notice that a transition is followed by a shared reading poem or a story. That's not a coincidence. Poems and stories typically require greater student focus than other component types, like songs. So, to prevent loss of focus in your students, the Grapeseed curriculum team has planned for movement beforehand to help assist you. In the time before lesson plans, teachers would have to consider this as they plan their own lessons, but now this is taken care of for you. was a good day, but now I will say goodbye, my friends, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.